General Motors says that in only 18 months, it can get the cost of its battery cells down to $87 per kilowatt hour. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. The cost of the batteries in an EV, it's the most, obviously, the biggest cost to the car, the battery pack. So General Motors believes that the only way it can be profitable as a car company is by reducing the cost of its batteries down eventually by 70%. I've talked about that in the past. It seems like a very optimistic number. Now, I hope GM are right. I hope that they can do this because that would be incredible. If General Motors could do that, in fact, that would mean that its batteries will make the car so affordable that they could price their cars at a lower price than a gasoline-powered vehicle because a reduction of 70% in battery pack costs would be enough to be able to do that. Now, at present, General Motors does not make a profit on its EVs. In fact, it makes a loss. It hasn't disclosed what its losses are. Unfortunately, Ford's been very transparent. It's probably one of the only automakers in the world that have disclosed the losses it makes on EVs. All the others have been hard to figure out. However, General Motors is saying it is now on the path towards $87 per kilowatt hour by 2025, which is only, what, 18 months away. In its Q1 2023 earnings report, General Motors reported that it intends to reduce battery costs down to $87. And this is a massive development, as the Detroit-based automaker originally anticipated to reduce costs to the $100 per kilowatt hour range in its Ultium cell partnership with LG Energy Solutions. So it's saying that it won't get to 100 by 2025, it's gonna get down to 87. Big difference. We don't know exactly what they're paying today. It's believed to be approximately $141. This would be a massive difference going from 141 down to 87. So how exactly are they going to do that? Well, it's been a bit of controversy lately because General Motors canceled their fourth battery factory with LG Energy Solutions because it wants to start making Tesla-like 4680 cylindrical cells. When I say 4680, that's simply the size of the cell. We have no idea exactly what the ingredients to the batteries would actually be. A significant step to achieving this reduction in costs is related to the battery cell itself though, and the shape, size, and chemistry. GM has been in the process of developing cylindrical cells now, and they say that in comparison to the current pouch-style battery cells, cylindrical cells offer a competitive advantage due to the more streamlined production process. Basically, imagine a Coke bottle factory, right? Coke bottles, you're making millions of them, and they're coming through the production line really, really, really fast. Well, pouch cells don't actually go through the production line quickly like that. Cylindrical cells, though, can. That's why Tesla chose to use them, because you can produce them really, really quickly, kind of like a Coke bottle or a Coke can, in fact, probably in a more in a similar way to a Coke can. Now, that being said, rival Stellantis, BMW and Volvo are also working on cylindrical batteries. So many so-called engineers and uh, quasi experts on YouTube say that cylindrical batteries are too expensive, don't work. Um, basically, they're old hat technology. The interesting thing is here, BMW and General Motors and a number of other car companies seem to disagree with these YouTube experts. I don't think these YouTube experts would be making YouTube videos if they truly were the battery experts they claim to be. They'd probably be making batteries, making probably a lot more money. That's just my two cents on that idea. So General Motors say they will continue to scale production and optimize the chemistry of their pouch cells for performance, range, and cost using new approaches pioneered at GM's Wallace Battery Center and by our technology partners, they said. GM Executive Vice President Doug Parks made those comments and he met, went on to say this, the introduction of new cell form factors will allow us to expand into even more segments more quickly and integrate cells directly into battery packs to reduce weight, complexity, and costs. With multiple strong cell partners, we can scale our EV business faster than we could going alone. Now, there are a few questions here, because clearly GM and LG Chem have, well, LG Energy Solutions, as they like to be known, but truth be told, LG Chem is one of the largest petrochemical companies on the face of the planet. Anyhow, another story. 
they are they have had some um, disagreements clearly uh, it's very well public known knowledge and some of this could possibly stem to the recalls I mean General Motors has spent 1.2 billion dollars of its own money plus it's had to weather a nightmare situation with the battery pack recalls for the Chevy Bolt and the Bolt EUV Jim has had to recall pretty much all of them hasn't finished replacing all the battery packs yet because it, it's a massive job it's getting through them. At last report, I believe they're through about 75% of the pack recalls. And they had to shut down the factory as well for eight months in order to change the batteries to fix the problems. Those batteries were made by LG Chem. Now, with this in mind, it's worth noting that battery prices across the industry have been rising in 2022, but coming down in 2023. And that's thanks to material prices coming down. For example, the price of lithium has come down by more than 60% this year. However, GM Authority reported that the average cost for EV batteries rose 7% for General Motors to around $141 per kilowatt hour over the course of the 2021 calendar year. Those prices could be significantly down now, now though, as a result of the reduced cost of the minerals needed to go into the batteries themselves. Now, whilst it's true that cobalt, nickel, and lithium prices did spike massively last year, they've come back down to a much more reasonable level over the last few months. Those prices could be factored into GM's optimistic $87 per kilowatt hour price. Maybe they're hoping that um, companies like BYD and CATL using sodium batteries will take some more price pressure away from nickel, cobalt, and lithium prices. Now that's what's actually been happening in the market currently, and that could happen in the future. It may or may not. GM is really guessing here. There's no real way for them to know for sure that they can manufacture batteries at $87 per kilowatt hour. It's not a guaranteed figure. So if you're investing in GM, I wouldn't treat this as scripture or you know facts. I would treat this as just a general idea or a general parameter. Now, GM actually could do this, one of the ways they could do this is by scale. More scale means cheaper prices. For example, if you make, say, 100 gigawatt hours of batteries, the price might be $100 per kilowatt hour. If you make 200, the price might come down to 90 because then you can negotiate larger supply contracts and get cheaper prices on the materials that you need. GM, of course, is very well aware of the issues they have with batteries. They're also very well aware of the fact that they have been dependent on one battery supplier, which is a big problem. All eggs in one basket, all eggs in the LG Energy Solutions basket. That's changing, though. They've now decided to make batteries with a different battery company, and those will likely be cylindrical battery cells. Now, let me know what your thoughts are on GM's future likely battery technology and their costs. GM have touted their Ultium technology for a little while, saying it's amazing, best in the industry. That hasn't really turned out to be correct. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.